Hi, welcome back to Team Forget Me Nots. I'm Rachel and I upcycle furniture and decor. And today's video is a really exciting one because it's the launch of a brand new product line. And the post over at teamforgetmenots.com has been sponsored by Dixie Bell. But as it's a completely new product line, I don't know how to use it. So come along and let's do some trial and error together. So today's project actually involves a brand new product line called Terra Paint from Dixie Bell. So I haven't used clay based paints before but what I do know about them is that they're really good for blending and building up lots of layers. So I thought whatever I did create it could be really artistic and funky so I was very excited to just have a play around. So my canvas for this experimental session is this little side table which was actually free from a charity shop and they just wanted to get rid of it because they thought nobody would buy it. It had one little split on the bottom of one of the legs and the tabletop was slightly warped and raised up at the edge but really it was completely fine to use. So to solve the problem of that slight split in the wood on one of the legs, I just used some super glue and a clamp to keep the leg tight together while it's set, which literally took a couple of minutes, if not less. Someone commented the other day that they were surprised I hadn't used white lightning to clean my project, so I hate to be predictable, but the white lightning is back. So I started just by spraying this all down with white lightning and then giving it a rinse with clean water. And I then roughed up the surface with some sandpaper, starting in a medium grit and then going to a fine grit, making sure that I was sanding in the direction of the grain. And then on to a couple of optional steps, which I just did for personal preference. I used a slick stick, which is to go over shiny or metallic surfaces to help the paint stick better. And I used that just on the areas where the table was screwed together. And then the final bit of prep before starting with my experiment, I decided to prime just the tabletop and over the knots in the wood. There's a little bit of water damage on the tabletop and the knots in the wood, I didn't know how that would react with either being visible or not through the terra paint after I'd finished with it. So I thought it was a safer bet to cover it up and get a nice clean canvas to start with. So onto the fun stuff and playing with the paint eventually. I knew I was going to do a transition colour as this paint was supposedly really good for blending so I started with the darkest colour which was Blue Moon and did that on the legs and the bottom half of the table. And I found it was best to lightly dampen the brush before starting because the paint was quite thick and that helped it move around a lot better. I didn't start with the tabletop because then I wouldn't have been able to flip it over and paint underneath so I made sure I did it the bottom half first. And as I didn't paint the bottom of the legs, it was fine to turn over and have it all drying at the same time. I wanted to get a solid base coat of each of the colours on first before I did any blending, so that it wouldn't show the natural wood or of course the grey primer underneath after I'd wiped it back at all. Probably the biggest difference between this clay paint and say the all-in-one paints that I use or sometimes chalk paints that I use is this will reactivate with water unless you top coat it with something which means that you always need to seal it if you want it to be protected and then with something that is not water based which would reactivate the paint so you would want something like a wax unlike the normal paints that I use which tend to be self leveling and therefore hide the brush strokes quite well clay paint doesn't do this so all of the brush strokes and texture that is naturally visible will be there and you have to make it a feature which is why it's artistic and it gives it texture and depth and it's more interesting to look at than just a flat finish. And to start playing around with the transition from the dark blue to the light I use this chip brush which also creates a lot of texture because it is rougher bristles rather than the smooth bristles of the normal synthetic brushes that I use and used on the previous layers. I wasn't aiming for it to look beautiful and smooth because that's not what this paint will achieve and I just wanted to play around with it and see what it would look like. I moved on and found a stencil which was this dragonfly stencil called Enchanted Garden. 
I worked out roughly where I wanted the dragonfly to be located on the table and then started at an edge with the repeating pattern part of it. And I used stencil spray to keep the stencil in place while I added the paint. And for the paint I used my white part of the terra paint which was called Prairie Dawn. In total I needed to use this stencil or the section with the dragonfly across six pieces so it took probably an hour or so to actually get all of this paint down nicely. And even though it does come with guides to line it up nicely, I did still find myself with a line between the dragonfly and the bottom piece. So I just went back in with an artist's brush and hid that line. And actually the tabletop wasn't a perfectly flat surface already, so that slightly imperfect grungy look worked really well for this. And continuing with my experiment, I actually changed my mind and decided to add the white into the legs as well and just bring that transitional colour even further down. I did this in combination with the chip brush, also a sponge that I'd used for the stencil and then a cloth to wipe it back. And with the mister bottle, it was really just a case of working out whether I liked the dabbed on effect from the sponge or the lines created by the brush and mostly it was a combination of the two until I was happy with it. After I did this I did feel that the plain solid colour of the bottom table was a little bit boring so I went back in with the cerulean blue and just added it lightly over the top of that blue and it sat in nicely to the grains really well and gave it a bit of extra depth. And apparently I couldn't leave any of the table without at least two bits of paint on it so I then went round the edge of the tabletop and just added a bit more white in and wiped it back with a cloth to take out some of those hard edges. I felt I needed to do something a little more to make the dragonfly stand out so I went back with the blue moon and just used it almost like a watercolour so the solid paint on the edges and then just more water to drag it into the middle and just get a nice gradient of that darker blue. And finally my fourth colour, the daffodil yellow, makes its appearance just for a few seconds as I gave the body of the dragonfly a bit of colour with that. And time for that all important sealing lest you undo all your hard work. If you wax a piece often you want to re-wax it within say six months or so and just top up that protective layer. Because it's a light wax this is a great tool for that purpose. Terra paint actually comes with its own heavy duty wax called Terra Wax. However at the time of this that was still in the post. So to protect the table while I waited for that to arrive I did just one coat of this, spraying it on and then using a cloth to wipe it across the entire surface. And when the Terra Wax arrives I'll give it a more heavy duty coating of the wax with that. My normal style is clean and classic so it doesn't really go for these blending techniques but actually these were so much fun that I think I might try them more and more. These Terra Paints have literally just been launched and will be available in July 2022 and I'll leave links to the website so when they are live you'll be able to find them. Please consider subscribing, it makes a huge difference to smaller channels like mine. Or watch another video in the playlist. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye!